Hello, thank you for joining us. This is video two of our five video series on basic ink formulation inside the Ink Formulation 6 software. This video will be pertaining to creating and calibrating thickness objects within the software. So we'll start by getting logged in. Okay, so if you remember where we left off in video one, we created a recipe and then we proved that it was within industry specifications. In this case, under 2DE CMC, D52 is our light source, and we compared it to the Pantone digital library that came with the Ink Formulation 6 software. I'm going to go get that recipe and pull it out of there. All right. So here's where we left off. Now I'm going to take my known formulation, my proven formulation, and I'm going to create a thickness object. A thickness object is a calibration of the volume of ink that your analox is capable of transferring to the substrate. It's all in comparison to the analox that we used at Interactive Inks when we created the assortment. If you're familiar with older softwares, the Color Master 3 used what was called calibration sets. Uh, Ink Formulation 6 calls it assortments. It's all just verbiage. They are the same thing. What they are is calibrated ink sets, components. So these are high strength toners. When we calibrate or we create an assortment, we are doing a number of rollouts, hundreds of rollouts, and we're digitally scanning those rollouts into the software using a specific BCM volume for all the rollouts. In this case, we used a 3 BCM. So that is one or 100 percent. Everything is compared to that 100 percent. Okay, It's going to be important. I hope that makes sense in just a minute here. So to get started, the first thing that we need to do is save our new known formulation as a palette form formulation. To do that, we have to assign a spectral densitometer curve to it. All right, So I'm going to go to database. Uh, I don't have to do that, actually. We're just going to save. I'm going to create a new folder. I was in starting formulas before. Now it's a proven formula, so I'm going to do what I might do on press and put it in a job jacket. Job number one, two, three, four, five, six is what we're going to call this job, and we're going to set it as our working folder. Okay, so there's our working folder here. Now I'm going to assign some spectral data to it. I'm going to measure. So this is the rollout of a 4.5 BCM. 232 that we created in video one. Okay, I'm going to change the name to um, now we'll just call it 232 proven 4.5 BCM on press one. We're going to save that recipe. We've taken our test formulation and we've made it a permanent formula with spectral data in the system. Once we've created our palette formulation, we can then use that spectral data to calibrate the transfer ability of the analogs that we used to create that formulation. So I'm going to go to database, thickness objects. Over the years, I've uh, calibrated many BCM. These are all the ones that we have in our laboratory for different assortments and things. We're going to go ahead and click New. And we're going to have to give it a designation. So I'm using high strength toners. So I'll say HST, high strength toners, 4.5 BCM, billions of cubic microns. And I'll just put the substrate that I use, maybe C1S. You can use any descriptors here. All right. And we're going to click Calibrate. We're going to choose the assortment that we created the formulation with. There's two different ways to calibrate your analogs. One is automatic. Uh, this is what we typically do in the lab. And what it will do is ask us to weigh up these basic formulations. 5% green, 95% extending varnish. 4% violet, 96% extending varnish, and so on and so forth. And if we measured all those out and we did all these rollouts, it would be a very accurate way of calibrating each analox. It's a little unrealistic to expect to do that for all of your analoxes on all of your presses 
um, in a, you know, in a working environment. So what we do is, when we're actually on press, is we use manual using an already existing formula, which is of course what we created in video one. So in starting formulas, we don't want to be there. We want to be in our proven formulas here. Notice how the other formulas didn't show up. And even though there are formulas in the starting formulas folder, they didn't show up because we did not create a palette formulation. We did not assign spectral data to those formulas, so you cannot use them. All right. So in job number one, two, three, four, five, six, we have the formulation that we did, and we simply click next. Now it is saying 112.54%. So what that means is my 4.5 BCM is only transferring 12.5% greater than my 3.2%, I believe, was is what we created our assortment at. So now we've calibrated, and we just finish. Okay, I'm going to say OK, and we have our new HST 4.5 BCM on C1S calibrated, and close. So the next time I go to create a formulation, I can use that thickness object for that BCM volume. So just very quickly, and we'll do this in video 5 of this, we'll create a, a full formulation. If I wanted to redo this 232, let's say I wanted to reformulate it. And for now, we'll just say substrated current assortment. Instead of 100%, I actually know it's 112.5%. I could type it in, or close out of here. I can go to settings, formulation settings, change this to, oh, I'm sorry, change the in percentage of calibration to thickness objects. I have a number of different ones in here. Now, when I go to formulate this, I can choose from the thickness objects that I've calibrated. Now, here's the new ones that we created. HST, 4.5 BCM, C1S, 113% approximately. What this allows you to do, thickness objects, is essentially calibrate using known formulas all of your analogs that you have in-house. By doing this, all of your starting formulations will become much more accurate. I hope you join us in video three. We are going to go over creating substrates using the same formulation that we just used to create our thickness objects. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.